Fighters, Thomas y Caballeros, it's Golden Time! Introducing team first tonight, fighting out of the blue corner. In 33 professional contests, his record is outstanding. 32 victories, 15 wins, coming to by way of knockout and only one defeat. Introducing to you the fighting bride of Akragana. Here is the Game Boy, Emmanuel Tico. And across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, standing with California Boxing Hall of Famer trainer Joe Goosen. Assisted by Father Henry Garcia and Brother Sean Garcia. Tonight, wearing emerald green with gold, he officially weighed in 138.8 pounds. A 21 professional bounce. He is perfect. 21 victories, 18 wins coming to by way of knockout. No defeats. Tonight, ready to establish his return. Here is the fighting pride of Victorville, California. Ryan Garcia! Hey, Goop. Okay, guys, hey, both these trunks are good right there. Give me a good, clean fight. Obey my commands and protect yourselves at all times. Touch gloves, good luck. Ryan Garcia looking to regain momentum, reinvigorate the public, and reward his fans with a highlight reel knockout. Standing in his way from Ghana, one of the most confident and hungry fighters you will ever meet, and Emmanuel Tego. Ryan Garcia is back. He was missed. How good will he be? 12 rounds. Live from San Antonio, Texas on the zone, Todd Grisham, Sinisa Estrada, and Sergio Mora on the call. Garcia starting off really fast, walking down Tego right off the bat. Wants to start off fast and impose his size. Officially, Tego listed just two inches shorter than Garcia, but he looks eight inches shorter right now. No, he's shorter, but he has a longer reach, believe it or not. Tego has a 74-inch reach. Tego reaching with that right hand. He's got to get it inside. Speaking of right hand, Ryan Garcia has his right hand back. So, like you said in the fighter meeting, maybe we'll be seeing that right hand he, tonight. He promised us the right hand is 100%. And he will land it. A lot of pressure being applied by Ryan Garcia, cutting off the ring, walking down Tego. You know, that's Joe Goosen right there. Joe Goosen loves pressure to impose the will and size of a boxer. A lot of pressure on Ryan to perform tonight. From his body language and talking to him, he doesn't seem to be feeling it, though. Joe Goosen, his trainer, said, I would be absolutely shocked if this goes the distance. That body shot. Garcia's going downstairs already. Tego laughing it off. A lot of pressure on Tego. You would think biggest fight of his life. An entire country behind him. Ryan Garcia applying a lot of pressure, but I don't see no sweat glistening. No. I'm not sure if he's really warmed up, but right now he's going after it. No warm up needed when it comes to King Rai, I guess. Shrink the ring down. Good jab right there by Tego, right to the chest. Garcia's getting really aggressive, so whenever you have someone that aggressive, just a, a jab to the chest would back him off. Just like that. Garcia before, one punch is all it takes. 
right hand seems to be back. Let's right across the jaw. Tego on his bicycle going backwards. I think that left hook caught the attention of Tego. Came so fast. The speed is what catches you off guard. It's a mix of speed and power. There it is again. Round two. And most boxing pundits said if Tego can make it out of the first three or four rounds, he's got a chance. One round down. With the kind of pressure that Garcia's applying on Tego, he will have the opportunity to land something. But right now, the, the speed is overwhelming Tego and the aggression of Garcia. He's just walking forward. No respect for Tego right now. Garcia just looks so much bigger. That's what Garcia's going to need more of. I think uh, it's going to be a right hand. Tego is really good at punching and dipping, so he can dip under the left hooks. But that right hand is going to be a lot harder to get away from. Sinisa, does it bother you that Garcia keeps his hands low? That Garcia keeps his hands low? Oh, when he's moving forward. Um, as long as it's, yes, it's, his chin should definitely be tucked in. I mean, you don't want to see the same thing that happened with the uh, Campbell fight, him countering over the top because Ryan's head is too high or his chin is too high. So, um, yeah, we'd like to see him keep his chin tucked like he is now while he's walking forward with his hands high. Of course, Luke Campbell, the first fighter to drop Ryan Garcia. That was January 2nd of last year, over 450 days since we've seen Garcia in a boxing ring. You know, some fighters fight better with their hands a little low like that. You can see. There's that right hand. Right cross, Tego. That got, shook. Yeah, he's got happy feet now in the corner. That shook Tego with the right hand right to the temple. Kind of short circuited him for a minute. There he goes. And that's what Ryan Garcia's going to need to knock down Tego. That right hand. Tego's mad at the ref. Should be mad at himself. He legitimately got caught. Let's see how wounded he is. Ryan Garcia predicted. Two or three rounds to take Tego out. Tego trying to duck underneath all these punches. How low can he go? With this much aggression that Garcia's applying on Tego, Tego has an opportunity to land something as well. He can't match the speed of Garcia, but if he can catch him in time of coming in or even bang away at the body, Tego does have strong punches to the body. 15 KOs in his 32 wins, Emmanuel Tego. Everyone knows that speed kills, but I'll tell you what it does. Speed intimidates. All right, round three now. Tego to the canvas in the second. That'll be a 10-8 round for Flash. Seems like it's a little difficult for Ryan to land that left hook that he loves to land because Tego's moving away. Not only but moving if, he, if he throws that right hand like Sergio said and lands it, then it's going to open up for the left hook. Tego's, Tego's good at punching and dipping. Uh, so that's why I said that left hook wasn't going to be the punch that, that was going to land. It's the right hand and uppercuts. Because Tego does dip down. Tego has a strong back. Nice body shot from Garcia. Body shot there by Garcia. Sound about her lead. You know, Tego's face, he just looks flummoxed. He looks like he's in survival mode. He's been he doesn't want to get caught with yeah. the big shot from Ryan Garcia. He's been spun around literally and now just trying to find his bearings. And the speed is just blurring. It's lightning. Speed by Garcia and the accuracy of the punches. It's really impressive. He's like a marksman. Garcia is. Now right behind the 
right here. Tago trying to hold on. Short right hand. Caught Tago right there. Garcia looking very, very relaxed. There was that check hook he tried to land, Nisa. Yeah, I like how he's changing it up to kind of like an uppercut hook in a way, like a long uppercut hook. And like Ryan said in the fighter meeting, he can hook from anywhere. I'll tell you what else is uh, intimidating. Not only the hand speed, the lightning hand speed of Ryan Garcia, but how calm he is. Look at how relaxed Ryan Garcia is just walking in. No worries in the world. No respect for Tago. Anytime you have a reactive puncher like Ryan Garcia, you gotta faint. You gotta faint to get him to bite. Those hands are way too fast. Tago's gonna get rope burns on his back. <laughs> Backpedaling, nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. Here we go, round four. Well, Sergio, he made it through three rounds. Tago needs to, if he came to win, he's going to have to take some chances. He's going to have to get some respect, because right now Ryan Garcia is walking him back way too easily, pinning him against the ropes. There's another body blow, right hand. Tego should return the favor to the body. Whenever you have someone that aggressive, just to a jab to the chest or the body, just to get something going for Tego. But he's just intimidating by the blinding hand speed of Garcia. I think he's a little afraid to exchange as well. And that's where Ryan Garcia will land his solid shots when he exchanges with Tego because Tego opens up wide when he exchanges. Tego trying to get some shots in as Garcia was backing away. CompuBox power punches through three full rounds. Uh, I think Garcia might be winning. Did you expect more from Tago, Sergio? Uh, not this early, but I, I expect him. I expect him to try to do something where he's out of his element, where, where take some chances. I fourth, fifth, sixth round, but I need to see it though. If he makes it that far. with a fighter with this much speed. You don't want to exchange with him too early. So yes, after getting out of the third round, I get it. But now he needs to take some chances. And I would aim at the body if I was Tego. Tego does have the longer arms. Tego's already been down once. It just doesn't seem like Tego has anything that's going to disrupt or bother Garcia. He definitely does, and I think as soon as he takes that chance that Sergio was talking about, that's where it's gonna be the worst for him. But if he doesn't take any chances, he's not, he's just gonna come here to, to, to show up, not to win, not to do anything impressive. And he, if he says he's a warrior, he is, and he wants to take this victory back to Ghana, he needs to open up. Well, he said, listen, I'm the game boy, and I'm gonna control Ryan Garcia. If I tell him to go left, he'll go left. Tell him to go right, he goes right. That's not been the case so far. And now a little wrestling match on the upstairs. I'm not sure Tago's taken a step forward the entire fight. I wouldn't either if I were him. <laughs> Todd, you know, everyone could talk the talk, but when it comes when it comes to actually doing the walking, that's, you know, people get intimidated by speed. There's a right hand from Garcia. And Garcia's not only doing it with speed, he has power behind both those hands. There is a swing and a miss from Tago.
say this, Tago is pretty impressive at going backwards. Must have done a lot of work on the treadmill. <laughs> By him moving backwards, it's not allowing Ryan to be able to step back and counter like he usually does. It's making it a little bit more complicated for him to do that. Chris Mannix is with Joe Goosen. Joe, what have you seen through Ryan through four? Well, I, it's what I predicted with this kid. Look, uh, Emmanuel to go. If I was his trainer, I saw along, I'd be having to move, 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 trying to survive the early rounds so he could get through the early rounds. You know, then go for something. But right now, Ryan's got to break uh, to go's body down a little bit more. To go starting to hold the ground a little bit. Finally, uh, this is where we can hurt him. But he's been on the move the whole time, and we've been chasing him around the ring. Now it's it's up to us to cut the ring off, go to the body, slow him down, and those are kind of the instructions I'm giving Ryan right now. Thanks, Joe. Joe, of course, is also a boxing commentator, and you can hear why in that answer. A very detailed description. I didn't hear a jab uh, from, from Joe Goosen, though. I, I think that's what I think uh, Garcia's lacking right here. He's following him around, putting a lot of pressure, a lot of foot pressure as well. There's but body work. Some fast jabs will do the trick for Garcia. More of those right there. Sergio loves jabs. You can watch it weekly on the zone. <laughs> part of the <laughs> Chris Mannix. Not that jab. <laughs> And that's the thing that actually they said they worked on. Houston said they worked on the power jab, twisting them knuckles, you know, uh, uh, going off the back foot a little bit more. See right there, that's an opportunity for Tega to land something, a counter. If he really is looking to win and hurt Garcia, anytime Garcia opens up like that with twos and threes, you got to land something back, punch in between the shots. Well, the over-under in this fight was at four and a half rounds, so Tago has gone longer than Las Vegas thought he would. Hey, at least he's in the middle of the ring now. How about this? Stands and delivers more in this round. This is only Tago's second fight in the United States. He fought in California where he beat Mason Menard in his most recent bout. That was way back in November 2020. And that was by majority decision, so it wasn't too impressive. And that's a red flag anytime you're getting a, a fighter that's only fought in his home country. Got the jabs from Tago. Not always landed. Trying to find a way in is Ryan Garcia. It's a defense first strategy for Ortego. I like that combination right there by Garcia. Concentrate on the body just to finish it up with a clean off left hook. You could say not only defense first, but defense all the time. He has to do something offensively. So what do you do against opponents who refuse to engage? You gotta cut off the ring and uh, let go of your punches when you're in close enough range like that. You gotta take advantage of that small time that you have when you're close to them and in range. So I'd like to see Ryan Garcia open up a little more in these later rounds when he gets close enough to, to Tango. They have hurt Tango a little bit there. Nice chopping right hands right there. Short, but they're doing the job. Four, five, six chopping right hands. Oh, look at Tago fighting back for once. That's what Tago needs to do more. Punch in between the shots. That's what you're going to do with the faster man. You can't compete with Ryan's speed, but try to time him in between. A smile from Garcia says, OK, let's fight then. What to? You hit me a little bit. There you go.
Let's check in with JoJo Diaz and see what he thinks of this fight so far. Hey, JoJo. Yeah, to be, to be honest, I'm not that impressed, man. Uh, I, I tweeted uh, earlier that I need a shot or some coffee right now to keep me up for this fight. <laughs> um, Ryan Garcia, he's not. Uh, a guy like Tago, man, he should have got him out of there right away. I don't think Tago has no no experience or no uh, ring generalship uh, to, be in, uh, to be in a fight for several rounds. Um, I think Ryan should, uh, Garcia should be dictating the pace a little more. You agree with that, Sergio? I, you know, I want to see more jabs because the jab, the, the jabs would actually force Tego to throw something back and open up Tego to land a counter. So, in, in a way, I see what JoJo's saying. Yes, you need to, you need to actually engage in order oh, to get your point to Tego. Sorry to cut you off, Sergio. That may be the only big punch he lands, but he did catch Garcia clean. See, if you're just following your opponent around and, th and throwing twos and fuse. There you go, Garcia with a double right hand. Let's see some action. This is the point in the fight where now Garcia has to be the one to take the risk and to open up and make Tego open up too so he can land those power shots that I know he so badly wants to land. So right here, this is an opportunity for Tego to throw something wide. Garcia's really getting aggressive. This is exactly what he needs to do. Be aggressive, take the initiative to throw the combinations to make Tego open up. Copy box numbers, Tego 25-138. Garcia has tripled the output, 73 for 257. Swelling on the left eye now, Tego. Just barely missing with that. He's, over, he's really loading up on that right hand, but he's not setting it up with jabs. already tasted the power of Ryan Garcia. So the power and the speed's not catching him by surprise, but hopefully wait, Tego needs to open up. That's hard when you're the taller fighter because you can't land punches. And that's clean. why and that's why I was telling Todd and Chris that I see Tego going rounds. I didn't see this fight ending quick. You were actually right for once. <laughs> Anytime you're dealing with a fighter that punches and dips, moves laterally, has a strong back, and it's experienced like Tego, they're gonna go rounds. There's a right from Garcia. Rick, I got you. Stop, stop, stop. Thank you. Tego did go down in round two, but since then has stayed on his feet. Quiet, waiting for something big to happen. Tego, to his credit at least, hasn't allowed that to happen since the second round. Tego trying to time Garcia right now. Finally. I got some break. Well, Garcia's fitness certainly looks good. Stop. Stop. You're home. Well, when, you're, when you're that relaxed, and, and Garcia's not really throwing combinations, I mean, he's pot shotting Tego. You know, so it doesn't really extend, extend that much energy. You 
know Garcia wants to please this crowd so bad. He's doing everything he can. And Garcia really is throwing the right punch. He's coming up short with that right hand. I knew that left hook wasn't going to be uh, the money punch in this fight, but Garcia is trying different tactics, different punches, Look at getting lift, different looks. With a counter right from Tego, shrugged off by Garcia. Yes, it is St. Augustine, Florida, the oldest city in America. <laughs> so you're welcome. We thought we'd be talking about history during a Ryan Garcia fight, but that's the kind of bout this has been, largely in part to Emmanuel Tego's unwillingness to exchange that often with Garcia. But right now he's in the middle of the ring doing it. And there we see him finally exchanging. Here he comes. And that's going to give Garcia an opening to land something quick and fast. Maybe he's been let out of his cage here in the ninth round. Overhand right for Tego. This is the first fight with Joe Goosen as his trainer. Sergio, have you seen anything different? Quickly, actually, let's check in with Chris Mannis. Joe, we're into the ninth round now. Are you surprised we've gotten this far? No, about about the round we're in? Sure. No, not necessarily. I, I knew this. Look, he's only lost one fight in over 30 fights. This guy's not used to losing. He didn't come here to lose. I knew he had good legs. I knew he was going to be evasive. And, uh, you know, he's done exactly that. Has he won one round? No. Has Ryan won every round? Yes. Um, are we pressuring him the last three, four rounds? Yes. Do we have a chance of knocking him out? Yes. If he keeps doing what he's doing right now. So, you know, I knew this guy was going to be competitive, and he certainly is. Thanks, Joe. I got to throw this out there. You heard Joe Goosen say that now, but yesterday, and I'm quoting here, he said he would be shocked if Tago went the full distance with Ryan Garcia. And Ryan Garcia said that he expected this fight to go two or three rounds. So I think, uh, no, uh, Tago, Tago, you know, he's one of these fighters that, that you can look bad against. And I'm not saying Ryan Garcia's looking bad, but I think he's stuck in between styles. Let's check out Chris Mannix's scorecard. Yeah, no surprise, Todd. I'm going to shut up 80 to 71 in favor of Ryan Garcia with a 10 8 round thrown in in the second round. He's dominating every stretch of this fight. There's one adjustment I'd like to see Ryan Garcia make. It's create a little separation between himself and Tago. Too often, he is lunging in just like that and smothering his punches too much. If he can get some separation, he can get one of those hooks off. Uppercut just missing for Tago. And the separation's going to come with jabs, believe it or not. You know, Ryan Garcia has a lightning quick jab, one of the best, and that's what actually sets up the left hooks and the uppercuts and the right hands. But whenever you're pot shotting without the jab, it's easier to see. And I think that's the issue here. And I think that's something I would like to see improvement from Ryan Garcia is fighting in the inside uh, much better. I mean, he's ha he's hasn't had to fight in the inside because his power has just been knocking everybody out. But Whoa, he will need right. to fight in the inside against certain fighters. So Tego now starting some rounds perhaps that he hasn't seen before. He's never gone a full 12 rounds. The last time he went 10 was Carlos Morales back in 2018. The body shots there by Tego. I expected a lot more body shots from him earlier in the fight. Tego throwing more here. Tego has a good right hand. He throws good uh, body shots, but this is the first time I've actually seen any flashes of that. Who would have thought after Garcia knocked Emmanuel Tego down in round number two and was dominating, we'd see a tenth round? I mean, well, we initially said that if Tego gets out of the first two, three rounds, he's gonna, you know, he's gonna stay in the fight. He's gonna go distance. And that's exactly what's happening. The 
this crowd really wanting something electric to happen. No, oh, that's cut and clean. There go the legs. And the game boy in serious trouble. Trying to hang on for dear life. Tango doing the veteran thing by holding on by any means necessary. That could have easily been scored a knockdown. Expect him to hold on again. He is damaged goods. Ryan Garcia has a lot of time left. Let's see if he can stay out of the clinch. Keep his distance. Crowd on their feet. He's got to cut off the ring right here to force Tangle to engage. Because he's he's going forward, but he's giving him an escape route. So getting a little, he can get a little comfortable by being a little escape and continue love to, to survive. I would love to see lead right hand by Ryan Garcia. It's that right hand that actually rocked Tangle. See right there, it was a one-two. Lead right hand by Garcia. I think he's surprised and opened up the left hook. Oh, a stiff left hook from Garcia. by Garcia throughout this fight. You can see that his right hand definitely looked like it's back and happy. To his credit, Tago gonna survive this round when he was rocked. Two rounds or is he just looking to make it to the final bell? I think he's looking to just survive. If he's smart, he'll just try to survive these last two rounds and, and keep moving laterally. Um, like I said, Brian Garcia is moving forward, but he's not really cut off the ring too well. He's kind of forced, he's not forcing Tango to engage by cutting off the ring correctly. He's kind of giving him an escape route. Here's the first body shot by Tango with, with some kind of mean intentions. I, I should have, I wanted to see that earlier. He's an excellent body punch. It's just, Garcia's way too fast and that speed intimidates. been a lot of talk about Ryan Garcia possibly fighting Tank Davis, eventually Devin Haney, George Cambosis. Does this version of Ryan Garcia beat those guys? You know, I expect to see a little, uh, whenever you switch trainers like this, uh, the chemistry is not going to be there in the first fight. So in this fight, I can't say I, that, that I'll be too impressed. Let him build the chemistry with Joe Goosen. Let him find someone else that's a little bit more offensive minded as an opponent, and then we'll get to see uh, the changes. But whenever you're dealing with a fighter like Tago, the so experienced doesn't really open up. It's hard to look good against him. Garcia doing everything he can. Copy box numbers. Power punches landed 135 to 50. I'm sure there are many who felt, especially before this fight, if Garcia doesn't knock this guy out, it would feel almost like a loss. Do you sense no, that, Sergio? Not, not really, no. It's just, uh, you know, everyone wants to see this spectacular knockout, and we want to see you know, Ryan Garcia keep it ascending and being the star he is, but there's a lot of things that, a lot of changes in his life, you know, not only not only with personal issues, but with the trainer change, so he has to build that chemistry and meet, meet that, that, that trust, that new trust. He's got to go the distance sometime, you know. You can't just that too. always then fights early. This kind of gives you an idea of, um, of you know, how, how he'll do against other fighters in his division. It gives him some ring, ring uh, some round experience, which is good for him. I would think the only I, the only criticism that I would have of Brian Garcia in this fight is the lack of jab. 
It was really, there's no jabs, you know, that he has a beautiful <laughs> jab and he just, it's not there. <laughs> Unlock the safe. Can he find the combination to a knockout here in the 12th round? Will Tago go for Gusto or do this? Hang on, dodge, and run. Some ways, this might help Garcia land some bigger name opponents who will say, "Look, I can beat this guy." He would, maybe, if Tago goes 12 rounds with him, I can beat him. Maybe, but uh, you gotta ask. Ooh, and right as I say that, Garcia with the left hook. It's not over when you have speed and power like Garcia. It's not over till it's over. But yeah, maybe you know one back performance can actually do that. But you gotta remember the inactivity and the personal issues, the hand injury. There's a lot of things that that Ryan Garcia had to overcome. But Sinisa, would you describe this as a bad performance for Ryan Garcia, or is it just he fight, faced a fighter that did not try to win? I mean, it's hard facing fighters like this. Like, like Sergio said, his, his movement makes it difficult, and you're tall. Just because you're fighting someone that's shorter than you, than you doesn't mean it's going to be easier. It actually makes it more difficult, because it's more difficult to land those solid, hard power shots that you want to land. So I don't think it's a bad performance for him. I just think, I think it's actually good for him that he's getting these 12 rounds and he has not done that, so. Well, he's, and he's basically won almost every second of every round. Right, he's still dominating the fight. And how could that be a bad performance when I mean, he's pitching a shutout? But like you said, Todd, we're, we're gonna see all the, the tweets and uh, Instagram posts about yeah. <laughs> all the, everyone in the division wanting to face Ryan. And it's not like Ryan Garcia's not trying to take him out. I mean, he's punching with mean intentions. And he's still trying to do it in the 12th round. It's just, he's in there with an experienced fighter that didn't really come to win. Tago talked to talk, but he's definitely not walking it. And that's why I thought the fight would end early, because he was talking the talk. I've seen him engage a lot in fights, but he's just too scared to do it against Ryan Garcia. But Ryan needed him to engage in order for him to land those power shots, because, like I said, Tago, Tago, uh, Drops his hands while he's punching. And hey, so that's that's when he that's when he's most vulnerable. But hey, he's not doing that. He's not engaging. And listen, Garcia basically could have, could have fought anyone he wanted to fight. They chose this opponent, so this is what they're getting. And you got to appreciate Garcia still going for the knockout in the 12th round, and he's punching with mean intention still. But he's in there with a fighter that didn't come to win in Tago. Ladies and gentlemen, here from the Alamo Dome in San Antonio, Texas, put your hands together for both of these warriors here inside the ring. And now we go to the judges' scorecards. Here are the totals. Judge Thomas Carusoni and Ellis Johnson have about 119. 108, Judge Lisa Ciampa scores the bout. 118 to 109 to the winner by unanimous decision. And still undefeated from Victorville, California, Brian Garcia! No surprise there.